Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's another edition of Meet the Candidate. We are going to be speaking today with Desiree Timms, who is running for a United States congressional seat in Ohio District 10, Congressional District 10. I'm just gonna put this in the notes so y'all know when you come in what we're doing. Um, I hope you all have a marvelous weekend. And let's get started. You all ready to meet somebody else who's running? Yet another reason to go out and vote in the fall? Right? Let's do this. Okay, here we go. Hold on. All right. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Desiree? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I can't complain. I'm happy to be with you today. I know it's been a little difficult getting scheduled. You got to go out here and raise money and make calls and win this seat. Listen, <laughs> every day we're working hard to get the job done. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that it's um, you have your work cut out for you, but I also know you're a woman for the job. In addition to um, hearing about you just from being on the board, of course, for the CBC PAC, I also um, got a special little nudge from our shared friend, Winta, who oh, said, are you going to talk to Desiree? I said, it will be my pleasure. It'll be my pleasure. You just let me know. So I'm always, ha I'm always happy to get to get a nudge from my real boss, Winta, in case you didn't know. My boss, too. Shout yeah. out to Winta. <laughs> yes. She is so phenomenal. I love her spirit and always have. So the first thing I want to go to, actually, is... Um, there is a song that's out right now um, that is urging people. It really, to me, is like the modern, doper, cooler version of Schoolhouse Rock. And it's um, a song by uh, Yellow Pain, who, when I got it from Corey, who works with him, I was like, oh, my God, this is so dope. And then come to find out that's your cousin. Yes. <laughs> my vote don't count. Yellow Pain is your cousin, Desiree. Wait, we got to get him to do a song for you. He's so, so that talented. Was, that was the song. So that's, that's just for you. So I help educating. Write it. He's telling yeah. me about voter suppression, about how the government works. I need him one just a, a specific Desiree for Congress song. I have to think of that. So this the whole song came about because I'm back home after you know the Obama administration ended, worked on Capitol Hill, and I was like, okay. I am going to take a break from public service because people think Hill staffers make a lot of money and we don't. <laughs> Girl, what? <laughs> what? So, and I was on the higher end, but girl, what? Yeah. One more time for the people in the back. Right. So um, law school at night at Georgetown. And I was like, okay, I'm going to work at a firm for a little bit, pay my student loan debt down, yeah. eat good for a few weeks <laughs> or years. And I might uh, go cop these shoes real quick. You know, yeah. a little trip here and there. That was that was what I envisioned. Hi, yellow paint is on. Hey, yellow paint. <laughs> he gotta come on here too. I need you to wrap Re this whole thing on here. Send a request. Well, so, we can't because we, they, the oh, Instagram's sorry. not sophisticated yet, and oh. right now we can only have one at a time. But oh, hopefully sorry. soon. Desiree just told y'all how to make more money. Instagram. This is why she needs to be in Congress. <laughs> So, exactly. Right. So, I came home. I'm on the ground talking to people about what's happening. So, when I moved back home, the KKK marched downtown Dayton that weekend. And then we had tornadoes and a mass shooting. And I was like, okay, we have to vote. And we have to make sure people are paying attention. But everyone here in Dayton on the ground in my family, they know me from working in the Obama White House. And so, sometimes when I say things, and Angela, you know this, when we say things because they are, you guys are politicals, it sometimes doesn't reach them in the way that it should. And I thought, well, my cousin, he's a conscious rapper. He talks about a lot of things. And I was like, I need you to talk about this song. I have a song about voting in my head. It's going to be like Schoolhouse Rock, but hip hop. And yes. it's going to be dope. And I think it can work. And he was like, I don't know. And I was like, no, you can do it. And yeah. we spent months writing, fleshing out ideas, how to say So wait, you co-wrote the song, Desiree? I did. <laughs> Y'all, we need a rapper in Congress. <laughs> I'm not, I can't rap. 
I can just So tell. you were like, here's the concept, now make it rhyme. Here's the lyrics. This is what we're going to say. I was like, we have to talk about what happened in 2010. We have to talk about wow. Trayvon. We have to talk about judges at the end. We have to I talk about I love that. So it worked out. It was great. I'm so glad he said Let that. me find out you ghostwriting rap lyrics. Just a little bit, you know, hidden talent. <laughs> okay. okay so in addition to being um, a georgetown educated um lawyer you also are the granddaughter of a sharecropper um talk to me a little bit about what this means um having that in your lineage you know so often those are the things that ground us that people don't see and don't hear about so talk to me a little bit about that yeah, so my papa, as I call him, um, is from the Deep South. So, like, Beyonce, uh, Daddy Alabama, Mama Louisiana, my maternal side is Alabama, and my paternal side is Louisiana. Mm. So, <laughs> shout out to Beyonce. I'm Louisiana, both sides. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, he migrated from Alabama to Ohio in the late 1940s as part of the Great Migration, like many black people who live in Chicago and Detroit and the path as to how we got there was that our parents and grandparents came for opportunity and you know he dropped out of school when he was six years old because he had to work the fields mm -hmm. but he could never go back to school but he still was able to reach the middle class work in a factory and really he just taught me the importance of hard work and mm -hmm. made me promise to go to school for as long as I could because he couldn't and that's why I continue. I went to, I'm the first in the family to get the undergraduate degree. Then I got the master's and was like, okay, Papa, I'll be done. And he was like, oh, is, is that it? Can you go further? I was like, oh, pressure. Yeah. So he, he didn't live to see me graduate from law school, but it was oh. a promise I made him. Um, he, he passed away from stage four lung cancer, but I willed him through the White House. So that was one of his last uh, trips wow. was going through the Obama White House before Obama left and uh, made him that promise that I would continue to keep going and I did but he taught me the importance of hard work and perseverance and that's what I'm doing so I may not have the most money here as a congressional candidate I may not come from the wealthiest background but I come from a background of hard workers and no one will outwork Desiree Thames Listen here, and if you know it's real when you go to the third person on them and, and the thing, okay? <laughs> Nobody's going to at work Desiree Tim. I hear that. So talk to me so far about um, your journey on the campaign trail. Um, I think that these are, you are the exact type of candidate that people want to see because you know the experience. You've been there. You've um, lived it, right? You're not coming at this with some type of silver, gold, or platinum spoon in your mouth. You're like, I know this work. I do it well. I know what my community needs. I know what the American people need. Talk to us a little bit about your journey so far and what you've seen on the campaign trail. It has been a journey. Mm -hmm. It has been a journey. So today, Angela marks one year. I announced my candidacy for Congress one year ago today. And, you know, it it doesn't just happen overnight, like success and the good things that are happening and the energy we have on the campaign, it took months and months and months of grinding mm -hmm. and hard work. Um, I announced my candidacy after the mass shooting happened here in Dayton, where nine people died and 17 more were injured. And since then, we have just been beating the ground and beating the drum about why it's important to vote. Here on the ground, we have five colleges and universities, two are HBCU, Central State and Wilberforce. I'm on the Wilberforce board. Woo! HBCUs. <laughs> <represent>. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Wilberforce. Um, so we really need Black people to vote. Um, in Dayton, the, the population for African Americans is 43%. But wow. here's what we know in this district. Voter turnout dropped from 74% to 43%. Woo! That's why we needed the song, My Vote Don't Count, to let people know that your vote does count. I outraised my Republican opponent by more than $300,000 last quarter. Um, I have the most cash on hand or money in the bank than any other Democrat has ever had against him. And this guy is going down fast. Everyone's uh, starting to shift the race in our direction. We have energy, we have momentum, and we're trying to win this. But we need everyone on here to help out. So chip yeah. in $5 and give me a repost um, to, to continue to make it make it happen. 
Desiree, I know that this is it's not customary um, when you're, you know, campaigning to talk about some of the downsides or some of the challenges you face. But I think the truth of the matter is um, your people can't help you truly if they don't know where you're experiencing obstacles. So what are some of the challenges? Um, you know, I know that you've come in as a black person and a woman. Talk about that intersectionality. So you have those hurdles. Have you experienced any racism on the campaign trail, any harassment? You know, are there people who are like, why should I give to you? Can't win because our vote don't count. Like, what? talk about some of the things you're experiencing. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. Um, a few months ago, someone shot five rounds into our Democratic Party office here on oh, the ground. my and God. Yes. And that morning, I woke up and found screws in my tire. And that, so this all happened the either the late night or morning after I announced that I was attending the protest to march for social justice and the movement for black lives. Wow. And that next day I woke up to that news. So we know that people are intimidated. I'm the first African American Democratic nominee um, ever in this district. I'll be the first African American elected to Congress from all of Southwest Ohio, right where enslaved Africans crossed over uh, mm -hmm. the Ohio River for freedom. And so we're trying to make history, but we know that when you're trying to make history, that there is always going to be some resistance. Mm -hmm. There will always be people who are opposed. But like I tell everyone, they can shoot five rounds into another one of our Democratic Party offices. They can slash my tires. They can burn. No, the cross. hell you can't. No, they can burn the cross. I'm still gonna get up and keep going. Like you know, it's I. Can, I Let me tell y'all. Don't do it. <laughs> Somebody tell post this video for them. Don't do it. Desiree said you could. I said you better not. I'm gonna send. Listen, I'm gonna send the people to protect you because we're not <laughs> going for that. I like the first thing that that I thought of. Desiree is like you're talking about this and it's 2020. You know, like Medgar Evers was killed in front of his home, you know, like trying to fight just for access to the polls. And right. I'm just like, we have to get to a place where, you know, it's not, um, well, this is just what happens. Like, no, this is it. Actually, like the buck stops here. We're not going for that. You all are not going to threaten her out of this race. We have her back, right? And like, those are the types of things we need to be saying all over the country Right. Because it's not just um, police violence that threatens black people. If it's not police violence, it's COVID. If it's not COVID, it's the KKK and, it, and their new little friends. If it's not the KKK and their new little friends, it's the dude at the White House where most times we can't figure out if he's in the KKK or not. Right. And so um, anyway, let's get to your to your platform, because I think this is probably the other thing that <laughs> <laughs> right that people, um, you know, who may not be used to a black woman who is as powerful and as brilliant as you um, running for office anywhere, but especially not in this part of Ohio. So talk a little bit about the opportunity you hope to create. I know uh, one of the things that Stephen, shout out to Stephen for pulling all this great information um, has on here is you, a quote from you. The common denominator is we all want opportunity. We all want access to the American dream. And this is the best language that I can speak opportunity. So people definitely are taking a look. Can this little black girl from West Dayton do it? And the answer is, I've already done it. So talk to us about how you're going to create this opportunity for other people in Dayton and all throughout the country who look like us. Yeah, so this community was once referred to as Little Detroit. We had uh, lots of General Motor factories and CR. We invented the airplane here, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, the great poet is from here. And we just have a lot of history here. Unfortunately, we have been sort of on the back end since the recession, since jobs moved overseas. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of questions. People say, well, what are you saying to suburban voters versus the voters in the inner city? What are you saying to black people versus white people? And what I'm telling them, because everyone's sort of interested in leaning in on black women candidates or black candidates, period, mm -hmm. in 2020. And what I'm saying is, I say the same thing to the people in the suburbs as I do to the people in the inner city. And that's because we all want the same thing. We want jobs, we want opportunity, and we want to make sure we can breathe clean air and walk in peace and live in freedom. No one else disagrees with that. And so I don't have to change my tone. I don't have to change my messaging because the fact is we all got to live here. We all have to coexist yeah. and we all need help. So infrastructure. We have so many infrastructure breakdowns across the country. 
water boil advisories, our roads are broken, bridges are crumbling, and people are unemployed. I live in a food desert. It, it takes me 20 minutes to get to a grocery store to access fresh spinach, but I can get a Snickers bar down the street. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do, and it's not going to be easy because that man in the White House has caused a lot of chaos and drama yeah. and has done damage that people are not even aware of. Things that will never be on CNN and MSNBC, probably because it's too wonky and also because people are just not aware of what damage and destruction has occurred. So the next Congress and um, the next president and Madam Vice President Harris, we are going to have our work cut out ahead of us and we're going to have to uh, do a lot of catching up putting things back together in its place. But we have to make sure that we're building our country back better so mm -hmm. that everyone, regardless of what zip code you live in, who you look like, who you love, it doesn't matter. Everyone wants opportunity and everyone wants to live in peace and freedom. So that's what I will be fighting for in Congress. All right. So um, I know that um, you, you talked about wheeling your, your grandfather through the Obama White House but I don't think you said yet that you interned in the Obama White House. So talk to us a little bit about that experience <laughs> and how you feel like that prepared you um, for running for Congress as well as working um, on the Hill. So I did not know anything about politics as a child. I knew about social justice and protests and marches, but when I was in high school in the 10th grade, my history teacher came to class and he said, my daughter, who's in the fifth grade attending private school has the same textbook. And he caught her because uh, I guess she was trying to get the answers <laughs> for her homework. Mm -hmm. So she went to his room and like found the book and, you know, everyone laughed and I was mortified. And so I thought, well, you guys think it's funny, but all I heard was that the teacher just said, I'm going to save his name. Um, that his daughter has the same textbook as we do and we're in high school. And when I got to college, that yeah. really was sort of underlined and, and bolded because I was so far behind. I was mm. not prepared. College was very hard for me. Um, it was not a crystal stair. <laughs> you know, it had tax in it and boards. And, you know, it was very hard. And I was very frustrated. And then came along this man named Barack Obama, talking about hope and change. And yeah. I went to a house party. I knocked doors for him. And that really was life changing for me. Then I got a job. And like many people across the country, around that time during the recession, I was laid off. And after being laid off, my grandmother said, she said, I'm watching MSNBC and CNN. And Barack said he has jobs. And I was like, girl, and I talked to my grandmother like that, girl, <laughs> we we need to pray about Procter and Gamble or something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to the White House website and they had an internship posted. And I said, the only job I see is this internship and we don't have any connections. So we are probably not going to get that internship. <laughs> and I applied and um, I got it. Mm. And that's how this whole thing started. I, I got in the White House. I didn't know anyone. I was just there to do the work and to learn more and to figure out how we can bring back Ohio, how we can bring back opportunities for lower income communities. How can we make sure that little girls who look like me don't have to worry about graduating from high school with sixth grade reading materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I, I kept going Capitol Hill, worked on Congress, worked in Congress for Senator Cher Brown and Kirsten Gillibrand. And I was elected president of the Senate Black Legislative Staff Caucus. And Andrew, hey, SBLSC. Yes, shout out to SBLSC and Congressional Black Associates because, you know, the work really gets done with the staff. I love y'all. <laughs> I love them so much. I love them. And, you know, when you're on the Hill, there aren't a lot of people who look like us. Um, there aren't a lot of people who come from the same background as me. Um, in terms of working class, first generations. And you so, see our bosses in here. She's like, your 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 title's not right. She's like, learn more at, at timsforcongress.com. You know, Winter's in Winter. here. Winter, we love you. We already said you were the boss and you in here flexing. We see you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Love you, counselor. I'm sorry, Desiree. I just saw no, you pop it. I, I was like, I, look I at her in here handing out flyers for the club. <laughs> you coming through? You coming through? 
It's Tips for Congress. You coming through? <laughs> TipsforCongress.com. You got a check? You got a check? You want to come in VIP? You got a phone bank. What we doing? <laughs> Wins is in here working, Thanks, working. Vincent. I wish Toby wasn't here because she would be sitting right here right? Me right now. <laughs> like, man, like, you did what you didn't ask about yet is. I love her. Okay, I'm what, sorry. What did I miss, Winter? Tech, tell me what I missed. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we have to uh, we have to make sure that everyday people have a seat at the table, Angela. Yes. Um, in Congress on Capitol Hill, it's a lot of trust fund babies, a lot of people there whose parents and grandparents and great grandparents were former U.S. presidents and diplomats and everything else. But we have to make sure that when we're talking about affordable child care, universal preschool, access to health care criminal justice reform, that we have people who know people who are close to the people um, who are in need of these these issues and getting these policies solved. Mm -hmm. Because right now we are not at the table. We are not invited to sit down at the table and we can't even bring our chair through the door to get into the room. So we have to break down the doors, build a bigger table and make sure we can all have a seat to make the change that's necessary because people are dying people are hurting right now that six hundred dollars is gone so mm -hmm. people are about to get evicted and we have a lot of work to do yeah yes indeed well i um i'm so grateful that you would spend any you know any time with me if there's something i can do if i need to do a video winter will tell me but i'm i'm in you know and, and well, i guess this will be up you, for sure you put it out there so you like since you asked since, since you asked tell so. yellow paint i want to be the hype Mr. person if if you if you wrote the rap, like, can I be the hype woman in the background? So, okay, shout out to Seven Streeter because she just jumped. Well, I on know the she's on there too, but yeah. can we, can you add yeah. me to the choir part? We made it. Yellow pain. Respond in the comments. We want to. He might have left us. We he might be through with us. Yeah, <laughs> but yes, you all you all should definitely check out Yellow Pain's. Um, what's it? my vote don't count my because don't Desiree count. co wrote the song. Number one. So we could get a ghostwriting rapper in Congress. <laughs> she got a Georgetown law degree. Her granddaddy was a sharecropper. She uh, interned for the Obama White House. She worked on the Senate side. She was the president over the suit. Uh, no, I almost said the suit. The Senate black. Anyway, the black staff is on the Senate side. That's too long. SPLSC. <laughs> and she is also, she has the same boss as me, Winta. Um, and so here we are. Um, trying to push out and get out the vote in Dayton to ensure that Desiree becomes the first black person to represent that district. And it's high time. You said the demographics are what? What black demographics are 40, 37 percent? In Dayton, in the city of Dayton alone, it's 43 percent. The district 43%. is about 20 percent. So yeah. it's, it will be uh, made or broken based on uh, black voter turnout. So they're trying to take away the mailboxes Girl, the press the vote. We need everyone to vote by any means necessary. Yeah, and vote early, Desiree. That's the point. I so we need right. to make sure everyone gets out and turn out the vote. So request your ballots online. DM me if you have questions on how to request a ballot. Go to vote.org or IWillVote.com. We have to vote. This is not a game. It's not a joke. And I am not spending another three summers in the house with a mask on. Okay. Yeah. Well, we yes, we, we got to get, we got to get clear on how to solve um, pandemics and it's not going to get clear with somebody that's not smart enough to figure it out. Here's the point y'all. Desiree is overqualified and underfunded, overqualified and underfunded, which is the story of our black lives. You know, the um, equal pay, women's equal pay day, a black, Lenard just called me. I'm calling back. I hope he doesn't call right back because that's what he do normally when I send him to decline. But anyway, um, the story of a black woman's life is overqualified and underfunded. Don't let that be the case for this campaign. You all can donate. She told you the small dollars matter. Okay, so you can put a recurring recurring donation on. Get let's get her into the house. We need her in the house. We talked about trust fund babies in the house, but there are a lot of black members who are similarly situated to Desiree and are also overqualified and underfunded. So let's make sure we break that cycle here. Um, let's get on these phone banks, these text banks, and get Desiree into the United States House of Representatives, representing Ohio's Congressional District 10. So Desiree, I thank you so much for being here. You have any parting words for us, any parting inspiration? Of course I do. 
we have to win. And the only way that's going to happen is it is with you guys. I can't do it by myself. It takes a village. It takes three villages. And so I need all of you guys to chip in $5. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, repost, because this is a digital campaign. Campaigning in COVID is very different. That means we need more people on social media to see my name, to know that they have an option on the ballot. So $5 and a repost, $5 and a repost, $5 and a repost. I can't say it enough. Visit timsforcongress.com and let's get involved. Let's win this. We got a lot of history to make and we're going to do it together. Yes, yes, we are. Thank you so much, Desiree. I can't Thank wait you. to celebrate with you on the other side. Let's make history. I you love got it, all. sis. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, everybody. That was Desiree Timms running for Congressional District 10 in Ohio, um, representing Dayton. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another edition of Meet the Candidate. Uh, today's guest, again, was Desiree Timms. Thank you all so much. Timsforcongress.com, because Winter will beat me up if I don't say it. Um, thank you all so much. Happy Friday, and have a marvelous weekend.